طيب we'll go to the hadith إن شاء الله تعالى I will let get you early إن شاء الله if you wish طيب We come to قال المصنف بعد بسم الله والصلاة والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وصيغ الأداء وصيغ الأداء الأداء is here أداء is to perform and here look سبحان الله up to now we know the state of the uh, narrator, the required state of the narrator, the healthy state of the chain of narration, the, all the issue related to the metan and all the terms. Now, between one narrator and the other narrator, between two narrators, how the communication is established. How the transfer of the hadith is done. So if a narrator is going to sit facing a student and he's going to say, recite a hadith, and he recited on the behalf of his shaykh, his teacher. How he going to, we're going to tell him, how did you study with the shaykh? How did you get this hadith? So this question we tell him, you know, uh, the issue that we call in the, in the terminology of hadith, of mustalah hadith, we call it tahammul al-hadith. Tahammul al-hadith. Tahammul, I'm carrying a hadith. How I'm, come, uh, how I'm carrying it? How did I get it in my hand? This hadith. Ada is um, how I'm going to transmit it. وَصِيَغُ الْأَدَاءِ The terms how I'm going to transmit it, I have to link it from where I got it. I'm going to tell you, take this paper. I got it from my teacher for you to, to learn it and to teach it. So you say, get this paper. Say, what this paper? Say, hadith. It says hadith. He said, from where you get it? Get it from my teacher who get it from his teacher, go through, come to the companion, to the, to the Prophet So the next question is, say, how did you get it? I heard it from my teacher. So this is Siyah al Ada. A way how I get the hadith. A way how I'm carrying this Amam. Or I can say, Haddathani. I heard it, Samirtu. Haddathani. He told me. Uh, I get this hadith by uh, reading it on my sheikh and he's listening. I getting this hadith by him dictating and I was writing. So the way how I get this amana for, for the muhaddith to transmit it, we call it tahammul al-hadith. And then every word it has defined for us how he get this hadith. That's what we call it, Siyagul Ada. The terms, the way how he going to transmit it, by linking it to his teacher. يقول هنا تحمل الحديث هو أخذ الطالب أخذ الطالب الحديث عن الشيخ بطريق من الطرق المعتبرة. So تحمل الحديث to carry the hadith is to take the hadith from the teacher with a way that being considered by the scholars. For example, he can say, uh, I get this hadith from my, uh, my teacher. Say, how did you get it? Said, I usually sit with him, but when he said at that time, I wasn't there. But one of my colleagues, I get it for him. I said, no. This is not a rightful way to say I get it from my teacher. You get it from more colleague 
whose could we get it from your teacher? So this is, this is not mu'tabar, this is not considered. If I say, I get it from my teacher, I say, how? He said, I heard him. Okay, this is, he's accepted. He told me, yes, he's accepted. He gave me his book. And he gave me the permission to narrate his book. Yes, he's accepted. So that's what we call, بِطَرِيقٍ مِنَ الطُّرُخِ الْمُعْتَبَرَةِ And the Mu'tabara considered is what considered by the, the scholar of the Hadith. What are the conditions to be uh, accepted or to be, uh, need to be fulfilled for the one who carry the Hadith, the one narrator of the Hadith? He need to be a student Mumayyaz. Mumayyaz, which is mean had the faculty to discern between things, to know what is wrong or right, to understand. So it doesn't require age of puberty. It requires a tamiz, a tamiz. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anh, the hadith, the famous hadith that he narrated when he was riding with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I'm going to teach you some words learn them and memorize them أحفظ الله يحفظك you know the famous hadith guard Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah will guard you to the end of the hadith and in the hadith when he said and if the whole ummah they gather against you to harm you with anything that Allah didn't decree for you, they cannot do it for you. You know this hadith, right? This hadith, Ibn Abbas heard it when he was six years old. So when he narrated it later, it was an evidence that the one who carried the hadith need to be mumayyiz. He has good memory. He remember. He saw. He said, for example, someone said, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu doing this and this. Is the hadith. When did you see that? I saw this when I was seven years old. His hadith is accepted. So the one who can carry the hadith and narrate the hadith required to be mumayyiz. So it doesn't have the condition to be, have the age of puberty, etc., etc. Uh, Al-Bukhari, he narrated the hadith on Muhammad ibn al-Rabi that hadith he said Aqiltu min al-Nabi, I remember the Prophet Sallallahu so he's saying something that he saw when he was very young and the Bukhari he accepted this riwayah and the people they accepted the narration of the young companion like Al Hassan ibn Ali, he narrated a hadith. Ibn Abbas, Ibn Zubayr, Wan Nu'man ibn Bashir. Al Nu'man ibn Bashir, he narrated a lot of hadith. And the Salaf, they used to bring their children into the harakat, in the congregation, so they listen. And whatever they listen, and they narrated later, is the al-ahadith. So this is uh, some of the condition of a tahammul al-hadith. Al-Turuq, as he's saying here, qala wasiyahu al-adai sami'tu. The highest is sami'tu. I heard him saying sami'tu. Now, we're going to see things just to, for the sake of the translation, there's many words that are going to be the same, but we are not doing like a translation in a linguistic point of view. This is a translation based on the terminology of muhaddithin. For example, سَمِعْتُ وَأَخْبَرَنِي وَأَنْبَأَنِي All of them are the same, almost. I heard, he told me, he let me know maybe أَنْبَأَنِي but the scholar of the hadith, every, every word they associated with 
you know, a specific circumstances, a specific way of transmission of hadith. And we're going to study. So Sami'atu is the one that he told him verbally and he heard him with his own ears. That's Sami'atu. Akhbarani, he told me it might be he gave him the permission. He gave him the permission to narrate his hadiths. So inshallah we're going to see the difference between them. Even though the words in translation they are the same. But in the hadith uh, according to the scholar of hadith are different. So there are eight. Eight ways. The first one as samau min al shaykhi As samau min al shaykhi قال سمعت I heard The example of this قال أن يقرأ how this is happen أن يقرأ الشيخ ويسمع التلميذ So the sheikh is reading and the student is listening It's either the teacher is reading from his book or is reading from his memory Imla'an aw ghayra imla. Imla'an. He's reading and the student is writing. So he say, you know, he's reading the hadith and the student taking note. And not taking note, actually making imla. The imla is to dictate. So the one who's reciting or reading, he's waiting for the student to finish writing. And difference between someone is giving like lecture explaining and someone takes notes. No, it's different. Imla is different. The Imla is someone is reading and he's be sure. Did you finish? Okay. And the one who's writing said, please hold on. One, once, hold on. Then he said, yes, I'm ready. So that's the Imla, which is characteristic of Imla is dictate. Time. لكنه في الإملاء أعلى لما فيه من شدة تحرز الشيخ والتلميذ. So when he will be reading, the student is listening with the إملاء. This is the highest of transmission of hadith, the highest level. Why? Because both the teacher and the student are very focused. The teacher, the sheikh, he's given the hadith. Knowing that the student is writing it, so he's very focused on every letter that he's saying. And the student, he's focusing, writing everything the Shaykh is saying. So, Sama' with Imla is the highest level of the transmission. Rutbatuhu. The level of the Sama'a. As Sama'u min lab the Shaykh arfa'u aqsamu attahamun. This is the highest level of being entrusted the Hadith. The highest. Which is the most authentic if both of them are trustworthy. Wa'a'laha and the highest. So he, the way how they say it, when he transmits, he says, He says, I heard and heard me. I heard and heard me. So according to Al-Hafaz, He says, 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 And to say, He says, 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 And to say, He says, He says, Is the most one that is spread among the scholar of the hadith. And there is no difference between them. According to the scholar of Hadith, now if he will say it in the plural, 
يقول حدثنا so like there's more than one this is is lower level than the other one because the other one حدثني he told me and the other one he told us us so he was with other students is the same level but the other one is higher because in haddathana he might put himself among a group that he wasn't among them for example we are discussing something and one of the student is absent then one of the student tell him what we discussed so the student who was absent he might be saying to another person he said oh yeah we studied in class actually the teacher told us and he wasn't there in that particular class so haddathana it might insinuate that the person he's there but he can say haddathana even though he might not uh, you know uh, be present in that particular class that's why haddathani is higher than haddathana the next one قال, uh, according to ibn salah the to to be restricted to sami'tu سمعنا حدثني حدثنا to not say أخبرنا وأنبأنا because that it has different meaning according to the scholar of hadith the second level is القراءة على الشيخ to read and the sheikh is listening It is to read and the sheikh is listening. It's either to read the narrator is reading from his memory, the student is reading from his memory or from a book. Or to listen to someone else reading from his book or from his memory while the teacher is listening. And you are present in this in this meeting in this this is they call it al ardu al ardu is to to recite what you have and this is taken from a hadith uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this way of the Ard. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, I'm going to ask you and I'm going to be harsh. Excuse me, Rasulullah. I mean, I'm going to be uh, stern into, into my question. فَلَا تَجِدُوا عَلَيَّ فِي نَفْسِكِ So don't have anything against me, Rasulullah. The Prophet said, ask whatever you want. فَقَالَ أَسْأَلُكَ بِرَبِّكَ وَرَبِّ مَنْ قَبْلَكَ مَنْ قَبْلِكَ آَ اللَّهُ أَمَرَكَ أَنْ تُصَلِّ الصَّلَوَاتِ أَنْ تُصَلِّ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ فِي الْيَوْمِ وَالْلَيْلَةِ Say, I ask you by Allah, by your Lord and the Lord of those before you. Truly Allah order you to pray five times a day, the day and the night. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma na'am. Qala unshiduka billahi, Allahu amaraka an tasuma hadha al-shahar min al-sana. I ask you by Allah, it's truly Allah ask you to, to fast this particular month. And he continued asking him the same way for the, all the pillars. And the Prophet ﷺ every time say, Allahumma na'am. And he asked him about the zakat and asked him about. 
Then the Rajul Kala Amen to be majita bih. I believe. I I witness you that I believe in all what you what you've been sent with. And he said, and I am a messenger from my people. And my name is Dhamam ibn Thalaba. When I go, go, go back to my people, they're going to all accept Islam because they sent me. So what you Dalala here, I mean the, the, the hadith, to say that the, he was reading on the Prophet And the Prophet was listening. And then when he went back to his people, he told them that he told them, I mean, because what they learned, and he read it on the Prophet, and the Prophet acknowledged it. And this is Bay's way of communication of the hadith. So based on that, so if the student comes and he read a hadith that he learned from his teacher, and he's the teacher, he's listening, and he acknowledged, he didn't say, no, this is wrong, just listening. That, subhanAllah, called al-ard is one of the way of communicating the hadith and having the authority to narrate that hadith from on behalf on that particular teacher. So this, so this one, we call it Al-Ard. Al-Ard. This is required two conditions to be fulfilled. That the one who's reading need to be a student who knows and who understands what he's reading. Of course. And the Shaykh, he need to acknowledge everything he read. Because if there's any distortion or anything, he has to stop him. So this is the very obvious and, uh, condition and that makes common sense. The, uh, what is its level? Uh, compared to the first one, سمعت وحدثني وسمعنا وحدثنا. The scholar they have difference of opinion on how to consider the reading on the teacher. Some of the scholars, including Al Bukhari, they had it to be at the same level as سمعت. قال ذهب مالك وأصحابه ومعظم علماء الحجاز والكوفة والبخاري إلى التسوية بين القراءة على الشيخ والسماع من لفظ الشيخ. They put it in the same level. Other scholar, including Abu Hanifa, they said القراءة على الشيخ is higher than السماع. But Al-Hafiz Ibn Hajar, he made and make some details. He said, if the student in the same level as his teacher, because the teacher uh, is not required or run the condition of the narrator of hadith to be a scholar. Because it might be someone who learned the hadith and he has a hadith, he heard them, especially from the tabi'in, but he's not a scholar. So the student who taken the hadith from him He's saying al hafiz if they are the same level or he has more knowledge than the one who getting the hadith from, then the sama' hearing is higher. If the teacher is real scholar, then faqiraatu uh, awla, so reading is higher. So it depends. But let's say as al-Bukhari and al-Imam Malik, they want to, Reading on the Shaykh and the Sama are the same level, inshallah. The same level. The same level in communicating and tahammul al hadith. How the way when he narrates the hadith, how usually which type of word he say? He can he should not say Sama'tu or Haddathani. He should say Qara'tu ala fulan. I'm narrating the hadith. Because, uh, you know, I read on so-and-so the hadith and then he narrated the hadith. So he has to, 
to mention the way how he get this hadith. That's Turuq al-Tahammul, or we call it Ada'u or Sighatul Ada. Or he will say, Qur'a ala fulanin wa ana asma'u. I'm narrating this hadith that I heard while so-and-so he was reading on the teacher so-and-so. And here, in this particular way, Al-Muhaddithin, they say, Akhbarana. You see why we don't want to put Akhbarana? They use it in the Qira'a ala shaykh. So, Sami'tu, literally he heard. Haddathani, literally he talked to him. Akhbarana, when they say Akhbarana, is like it happened through the reading. It happened through the reading. قال ثم قال لفظ أخبرنا فإنه شاع عند المحدثين إطلاق هذا اللفظ لمن تحمل بهذا الطريق. So أخبرنا is according to the محدثين. When the hadith was communicating through this way of reading. And some of them, or they say, حدثني قراءة عليه أو أنبأني فلان بقراءتي عليه. The next one is الإجازة. And inshallah we'll do it next time.